Hello, hello, this is Fear Dragon, and welcome to Breaking Out, the show about North American StarCraft 2 players. Here on this show, we spend one week highlighting an up-and-coming North American player. Throughout the week, we find out more about the player's history, their personality, and their playstyle over the course of six short episodes. On Monday, we'll interview the player and find out more about them. Tuesday through Thursday, we'll watch a game from each of the various matchups casted by your very own Fear Dragon. On Friday, we'll check out a generally awesome game with some sick play, and on Saturday, we'll kick it back with the player and have some wacky fun with some randomly selected events like handicap ladder matches, karaoke, and dance contests. Each episode aims to be about 20 to 30 minutes long, so you can learn more about the North American StarCraft II scene without interrupting your busy WCS schedule. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello, this is Fear Dragon, and welcome to another episode of Breaking Out. Today we have our Protoss vs. Protoss match from the Saravati week. So let's go ahead and jump in and introduce the players as we spawn down here in the bottom right-hand corner on top of the red Protoss player representing Team Clarity Gaming. He is the highlight player of the week. It is Clarity Gaming's Saravati. And his opponent... Asking Saravati not to go for Blink Soccer into DTs. It is going to be the blue Protoss player. A very, very strong player. And Astrea. I actually have already sent the name, but representing team.sca is going to be Astrea. And I actually am not sure if Astrea is a male or female. Because I know that there is a couple of players that I keep forgetting whether they're actually male or female. But regardless, Astrea, an absolutely fantastic, fantastic Grandmaster level Protoss player, so this is going to be a GM versus GM PvP matchup, and this is going to be pretty awesome because it looks like Saravati just saying uh, a little bit of advice, saying go robotics facility, encounter Blink Soccer and DT, and you can let me go for the Blink Soccer and DT. So we'll have to see whether or not Saravati actually decides to still go for Blink Soccer. Of course, a little bit of friendly chatter, but welcome to breaking out again. And this is a show about highlighting players, and again, we're looking at Clarity Gaming's Saravati. Now, I will note that players have not been afraid to actually submit games where they also lost, so do not think that just because we're casting Saravati's game means that Saravati is going to win in the end. We're going to just watch some awesome play from both these players, and, you know, Australia definitely going to be guaranteed to also give some good play. And we actually do have a little bit of knowledge about the openings as we end up seeing double gas going down for a straight up just putting two probes in each one of those gas guys is probably going to be a pretty normal opening going for that earlier mothership core and we'll have to just wait and see whether or not a straight up goes for any kind of fast three gateway play or what but in the meanwhile Saravati doing a very similar thing two guys in each gas geyser one thing i will note about Saravati, as mentioned in the interview is that he is a bit more of a micro oriented player and he's also a pretty innovative player he likes to think a little bit outside the box so we'll have to see which one of those two, or maybe even both of them, that he's going to be showcasing in this game. But we do end up seeing a probe go out very early for Saravati, which honestly is a little bit uncharacteristic of him. And actually already putting three guys in each one of those gas geysers is going to allow both these players to actually build up some of that gas. And we do end up seeing double gateway coming out from Australia, so probably going to be three soccer rush. But... I mean, normally we don't actually see Saravati in either of the other two matchups that we end up seeing on both Tuesday and Wednesday. He didn't actually go for the probe scout. And this game he is, so he's doing something a little bit different already. Curious to see how this is going to end up shaping up as we do end up seeing much of court coming out for Saravati and a Twilight Council being dropped down. Blink Stalker is a very, very popular choice in this matchup right now. And considering Saravati is a bit more of a micro-oriented player, this could actually end up working out for him. In the meanwhile, we look at Estrella again going for that three stalker pressure as the first stalker is going to be popping out. The other two stalkers are going to be coming out as well. And that's going to allow Estrella to seize a little bit early game map control, but... Speaking of map control, just look at the beautiful positioning of this mini-map. We have a probe of the Zunlog Watchtower, Saravati, checking around for proxy pylons with his Mothership Core and his Stalker in some elaborate schemes. And of course, Estrella doing the same. A very important aspect of PvP is making sure that you can actually handle any kind of crazy proxy shenanigans that your opponent tries to do to you. But at the same time, we do have Blink going down from the Twilight Council of Saravati. So clear to gaming, Saravati 
going to be getting a little bit aggressive very soon, I assume. Especially with that much core, you can do a little bit extra damage earlier on. We do end up seeing that probe taken out for Saravati, and that means that Estrella looking to be a little bit aggressive. Him, his or herself, and actually a robotics facility being thrown down. So this is going to be some light gateway aggression with the mothership core we'll have to see how much damage he can actually do he does have a probe over here just in case that he wants to actually decide to follow it up but now we end up seeing stalkers of saravati being a little bit outnumbered he's going to be careful because those three stalkers of astrea are going to be a little bit stronger until the blink finishes up and of course when these gateways finish up saravati also going to be able to warp in three stalkers at a time three stalkers at a time with blink is going to be pretty strong especially if you have the control of this player and it looks like with those warp gets finishing up, that's going to be a potential move out timing for Saravati. We'll have to see as, yeah, he's moving out with the, yeah, he's moving out with the probe and the two stalkers. Probably going to be warping in three stalkers to follow it up and would likely want to try and bring that mothership core unless he's just going to leave it at home for the defense. But of course, we do end up seeing that Astrea is going for the natural expansion, which is kind of a curious decision because it makes sense when you go for the robotic facility, you are normally a little bit more defensive against a blink stalker player. But at the same time, I'm curious if Australia can actually defend this. Gonna need to actually get out a, a uh, Immortal, actually, if he wants, uh, Australia wants to defend this. And the Immortal actually gonna be the second thing out. The Observer going to be the first one. But still, once that Immortal gets out, these Stalkers are going to have very, very short-lived lives. It's very difficult to blink micro against an Immortal. But now we end up seeing these Stalkers doing a little bit of nice picking off. And actually, some interesting force fields going down. But now we end up seeing a nice snipe off on the Mothership Corp. He's going to actually end up losing a couple of these Stalkers. Saravati is, that is. And, uh, I mean, it's going to be a kind of interesting. That means that no Photon Overcharge is going to be available. And that's a huge thing, especially with this Nexus finishing up. That is likely what Estrella was looking and depending on. To actually try and defend so Saravati going to be taking a little bit of a chance losing some of those stalkers but now actually going to be getting a good engagement over here but the immortal is also out and some nice blink stalker micro actually Saravati only losing one stalker so far in that engagement and could actually try and blink back that stalker doesn't actually get the blink off on that one but the immortal finally does lose all of its shields still alive though and that is some great control by Estrella as well as Saravati both these players doing a great job with that. And behind this, Saravati has thrown down that natural expansion. Going to continue just Chrono Boost out some probes. And while he continues this aggression, we'll have to see if it works out. Three Stalkers warped in. That means that, oh, actually a nice blink on top of that Immortal. The Immortal going to actually lose its life. And in the meanwhile, the Zealot's actually doing a good job over here on the low ground. And that Immortal's going to get blunk on too. There's not that much left over here for a dot SCA's Australia. Can dot SCA's Australia actually hold on? The Zealots and the probes forced to be pulled off. And it looks like the Mothership Corps are going to get taken out again for Australia. So Saravati, just like in his PVTs, taking out probes, or sorry, uh, all flying units available, whether it be a medevac, whether it be a Mothership Corps, and now with only Zealots left over to defend, as well as a handful of probes, it looks like Saravati going to take a bit of an advantage for a little while, and now we can end up seeing some nice Blink Micro back, and some really, really long distance tasing going on. It looks like Saravati trying to take out that Immortal doesn't quite get it, but look at how low health all these Stalkers are. That is just a sign of a great Blink Stalker player. And now it looks like finally, with a little bit of respite for the engagements, we're going to have a Robotics Facility thrown down and a Sentry warped in, so a little bit more of a defensive move. Just preparing for any kind of big Zealot run by, as I imagine. As long as you have the multitasking for it, it can be a great decision. But now we end up seeing Saravati. Gonna have to be so careful. There's two Immortals over here. How in the world are you supposed to push in against two Immortals? I think Saravati would be wise and be very, very careful over here. Especially since his Stalkers are a little bit low on health as well. One or two shots, and that'll be... Uh, actually, two shots will basically kill off these Stalkers. But wow, barely escaping with the skin of his teeth. And actually, we just saw a blink on, and actually, he managed to... Snipe off a sentry or a zealot, I believe. I'm not entirely sure, but Saravati has to be very, very careful. Look at how low health these stalkers are. That is some great timing by Saravati, but Estrella playing this out very, very well. With three immortals, Estrella is playing this out so smart, I have to say. A very smart player. And, you know, with a fourth immortal on the way, this could end up working out very, very well for Estrella. As the pylon has been taken out, and Saravati's going to have a difficult time making a whole lot happen over here. But there is a Mothership Corps actually now. So now Saravati's going to be using a bit of a different tactic as he's been pushing so far in the front. And it looks like Astraea's pulled his army a little bit out of position to this blink up into the back. And now we're going to end up seeing the Robux silly under fire. The Immortal is about to pop out, and it looks like it probably will be able to get out and help a little bit with the defense. But losing that Robux facility is going to be a huge loss. And it looks like, wow, he managed to get out of there 
with basically no losses. It looks like a Stalker going to be picked off also for his trouble. Does end up losing a Stalker of his own to those two Immortals, but man, that was a great uh, snipe off, and that means that no more Immortals are going to be coming out for a while. And we actually have a Warp Prism finishing up over here in the main base of Saravati. At the same time, we also have a Templar Archives actually coming out as well. So with some high Templars, it's going to be able to morph in some Archons, be able to crush Force Fields, be able to do a lot of damage to Zealots as well. So Saravati transitioning very, very nicely out of all this. And behind this, Estrella doesn't really have a lot of tech left. Actually, Estrella doesn't have any tech left. This is a very difficult situation for Estrella. The main big advantage of Estrella is the fact that Estrella has four immortals, okay? Dot SCA's Estrella has four immortals. Do you know what four immortals do? They, they wreck stalkers. But only if you're not Saravati blinking back every single one of these stalkers, like, immediately after the first two shots have been volleyed off by those immortals so you have to have some fantastic control but against four immortals i'm sorry i don't care if you're clarity gaming's you know saravati you're in bronze league or you're actually a robot like you cannot blink micro effectively against four immortals with target firing that is just going to be too too difficult so, I think that Astraea still has a good chance in this game, but Saravati gearing up for the aggression. Once again, we have some Zealots being warped in. A nice movement around the right-hand side of the map he is barely going to be catching wind of this uh, .SCA's Astraea, that is. So, should be able to prepare, should be able to back up a little bit. Nose lane doesn't have to actually devote too much of the uh, main base. But hold that thought, I take uh, spoke a little bit too soon. As a double Archon drop is actually dropped over into the main base at the same time as the Stalkers end up pushing in over here. The Charge Zealots actually, Charge is finished up for Saravati Zealots. And that's going to allow them to get right on top of those Immortals. The Immortals not standing a chance. And it looks like Saravati going to be winning that engagement over the front. Winning the engagement at the back with all those Charge Zealots dropped over. And the Archons in a great game. GG gets called and Dot SCA's Estrella falls to Clarity Gaming Saravati system. Some great play by Saravati and an Archon drop with the War Prism. That is not something that you see every day. And even though they didn't get a lot of kills, they forced all the probes off of mining. And they really, really are something kind of interesting to deal with. Because normally you want to try and warp in Zealots. They're a little bit uh, more cost effective in terms of DPS to deal with, you know, drops over in the main base. Especially dealing with your opponent's Zealots. You don't want to be warping in Stalkers because you have to micro those. So dropping Archons is a really interesting way to kind of counteract that you say no you have to warp in stalkers or you know get out something else other than just pure zealots to deal with this drop i'm not gonna allow you to just warp in zealots to deal with this drop because and that's actually going to split up your multitasking and your ability to split up your unit composition over at the front where i have a ton of you know my own uh, Archons, and I even have some, you know, Stalkers with Blink, and I have a Charge Zealots. So Saravati focuses his attention over the front, and hits him in the back with something that's very difficult to deal with multitasking-wise. So a great play from Saravati, and a great game by both of the players, although Saravati did come out on top. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of Breaking Out. If you did, please go ahead and give me some feedback over the Team Liquid thread. I'll be posting a link to that in the chat right now if you're watching this on Twitch. Otherwise... You're probably watching it on YouTube. Go ahead and click on the annotation, or not annotation, the notes below the video, and it'll take you to a link over the Team Liquid thread, and I'd love to hear your feedback either on my casting, on the series format, whatever. If you actually just want to tell me that you like pickles, please tell me that you like pickles over in the Team Liquid thread. But with that being said, also, feel free to give me a follow uh, over on twitch.tv slash feardragon64 or youtube.com slash feardragon64 or both if you're feeling super awesome. And uh, go ahead and check out Clarity Gaming Saravati because he's freaking awesome. At C is Saravati and, of course, at Clarity, I think, underscore gaming. Is it Clarity underscore gaming or is it just Clarity Gaming? I'll be, or it'll be in the chat and it's below the video. So please go check out Clarity Gaming and Saravati. And please tune in tomorrow at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time. Uh, for a awesome game. It's going to be an awesome game submitted by Saravati. Could be from any of the matchups. It's just going to be a super awesome game. There's nothing more to say about it, and there's no other reason why I need to even explain to you why you need to show up tomorrow. So, see you guys tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and have a wonderful night.